Hey guys, so we've got another example with my friend John. It says John obtains a score of 56 on a test. The mean mark was 67 and the standard deviation of marks was 5.5. What percentage of students scored a mark above John? So when we're looking at that, what we can see is we've been given number one, our uh, x value. So this is our x. Number two, we've been given our mean. And our mean is this value here of 67 because it says this was our mean mark. And number three, we've been given our standard deviation. So automatically we know we can work out a z-score. And what we have here is what percentage of students what percentage of students scored a mark above John. So what we're dealing with here is one of those 68, 95, 99.7 rule questions. So what we want to do is we want to say work out what percentage of students scored a mark above John. So the way we do that is we know we have our standardized curve. So on our standardized curve, we're going to have our regular curve. This is our regular curve, not our standardized curve. So we'll have a mean mark of 67. And then we'll have John down here. He's all the way to our left. He scored 56. So he's well below the average. And we know that our standard deviation is 5.5. So 5.5. So the first thing we need to do is we need to standardize. John's mark. So when we standardize it, we know that the standardized version basically tells us what distance, the number of standard deviations John's mark is away from the mean. So first thing we need to do is just work out how many standard deviations away from the mean John's mark is. So that we just use our z-score formula. So I won't go through the example of how to work this out, but there's a video on it. So to get our z-score, it's our x value, which is John's score, minus our mu, mu, which is our mean value. We sometimes see this called x bar. And then we divide it by our standard deviation. And this will tell us our standardized value for John. So our standardized value for John is going to be 56 minus our x value, which is 67 which is our mean, sorry, not our x value. So it's our x value minus our mean divided by our standard deviation of 5.5. And that's going to give us this negative 11 divided by 5.5, which is our standard deviation. And that's going to be our z-score. So if we work this through, our z-score is going to be negative 2. So we know that John's mark of 56, once it's been standardized on our standardized curve, will come out to be this negative 2 value here. So we need to work out what percentage of students scored a mark above. Keyword is above John. So we're looking for all of the data which falls from this 2 onwards all the way up here. So it's everyone who scored above John. So what we want to do is we want to use our 68, our 95, and 99.7 rule to work this out. And the way we'll do that is we'll do it like this. So if we have our rules, so our 68 and 95 and our 99.7 rule. So we know these apply to roughly, our 68 rule applies to one standard deviation, plus or minus. So it says 68% of our data is within plus or minus one standard deviations. Our 95% rule says 95% of data is in plus or minus two standard deviations and 99.7 percent of data is in plus or minus three standard deviations. So we know that John is exactly two standard deviations away. So what we can do is we can come down to our axis here and we can say well John's negative two standard deviations away. So between negative two and positive two standard deviations there will be 95 percent of our data. So this red section here, between negative 2 and positive 2 standard deviations, there will be 95% of data. And what we know is because we have the property of symmetry, if there's 95% of data in this entire area, then this pink area here, between negative 2 and zero standard deviations must contain half of the 95% and
and this green area here on the right must contain the other half. So there'll be two equal halves which add to 95%. So what we can say, if 95% of data is in this total area, then 95% divided by 2 is in the green area, and 95% divided by 2 is in the pink area. So if we just do the math there, so 95 divided by 2, will give us 47.5. So we can say that 47.5% of data is in this pink area here and 47.5% is in this green area. So bear in mind that John scored down here at this red line. So that's John here. So this pink area has 47.5%. Also what we know from our normal distribution is that 50% of observations lie above our mean. So we've got 50% this way and 50% this way. So 50% lie above the mean and 50% lie below the mean. And this is because of our property of symmetry. So because of this property of symmetry, we can say that 50% are that way, 50% are this way. So above the mean, we've got 50% of our observations. So this section here between naught and infinity, so up this way, this yellow section contains 50% of our observations. So we know that between negative two standard deviations and naught, we have 47.5% of observations. Between naught and infinity, we have 50% of observations. And we want to find the percentage of students that scored a mark above John. So what we can do is we can, we've can we applied our 95% rule and we found that there's this 47.5% between negative 2 theta and naught and then there's this 50% between naught and infinity. All we then do is we add them together. So we'll say the percentage of students who scored a mark above John, so I'll just denote that as this percentage of students is equal to this pink area of 47.5% plus this yellow area of 50%. So if we take those and we add them together, so we take our 47.5 and add it to 50, we'll get 97.5%. So that has basically been our calculation to work out this line here the number of students who scored a mark above John. This pink plus this yellow. Pink plus yellow, 47.5% plus our 50% gives us our 97.5%. So what we can say is that 97.5% of students had marks above John. So that's how we'd go through and do that. And if we were John, we'd say we were pretty disappointed that we were beaten by 97.5% of people, but we gave it a crack, and hopefully next time we'll do a little bit better. But that's how we work it out. 97.5% of students had a mark above John. Just apply these rules here, and we should be able to work that out nice and easily. So thanks for that, guys. I'll put up another example on a similar sort of concept. Cheers.